a oh, very proud proud day for the village and uh, you know for all of the you know the supporters especially and um, certain members of the committee we've uh, had a lot of change here in the last four or five years but there's you know four people in particular at the club um, Sheena Manson been here all our life um, working for the club probably the last 50 60 years um, free of charge phenomenal day for for people like that uh, John Young our chairman again been here through all the hard times Kevin Mackay uh, secretary of the football club, been here since he was a young lad, put in a lot more work than people like, like I have done. And, uh, and then we've got Sandy Mathers in who looks after the ground. You can see today the, the shape, the, the, the parks. And so all our committee, but especially those four people, those four people uh, deserve this today. The whole club supporters have uh, done a huge amount of work um, through, through the pre-season. We've uh, had people working on roofs, painting walls, doing up the social club, uh, decorating, um, you know, just fantastic uh, spirit about the village again and the football club's at the heart of that. And people are already talking about Broader Rangers winning the Highland League. And this is before we've even kicked off the season. What are your thoughts on that? I think that just probably because we came out of nowhere last year and, um, you know, let's be frank, I think we did dominate the Highland League last year. We won it by 20 points. There was a certain buzz about it, but I think every game this season's a cup final for the boys and um, it'll be down to mentality this year rather than ability. I think, I think we've shown everybody we've got the ability to win the Highland League, but to do it a second time and a third time is uh, that's what differentiates you know good teams from great teams so so we'll see how good we are in the next 12 months there's lots of rumors and things out in the in the thing we're going to continue to grow the football club um we're going to continue to do what's best for broader rangers football club and um you know long may it continue Today's match is brought to you by Direct Waste Management Limited and Orca Telecom. Well, another season of Highland League football is finally upon us. No doubt there'll be plenty of thrills and spells along the way as we wait to find out who this year's number one will be, who will be lifting the trophy in April and playing for a potential place in the fourth tier of Scottish football. Well, a reminder of who the champions are, Broda Rangers winning the title in style last season and favourites to retain their trophy and a place in League 2 perhaps this season. The deadly duo of Xander Sutherland and Stephen Mackay get us underway. Plenty of goals between them last season. They'll be hoping for more of the same this season. Well, Davy Kirkwood will anyway. Munro puts his foot on the ball. Adam Porritt, a new signing in the summer, gets it away. Huntley looking to make the champion sweat on day one as Ian Crookshanks tries to get through. Huntley with an early corner, hooked away to safety by the champions. Andrew Gregg. A real live wire for Broda last season. Looks to get going. On the far side is Xander Sutherland. Looks up, gets the cross in. It's a good one. It'll fall for Adam Porritt to let's fly. And that's beyond the advances of Grant Pennant's goal. Gavin Morrison swings in a dangerous looking free kick. It's gone behind for a corner. Sutherland. Sends in the cross, it might fall at the back post. That's a good save down low from Grant Pennant. Brewer coming once more. That's Scott Graham. Another summer new boy. It's Xander Sutherland looking to get the shot away and bending the ball over the crossbar of Grant Pennant. Mallon sends the ball forward. Porritt. Yeah, looked like he was caught. Free kick to Brora. Morrison will take. Headed away. Back to Morrison. Another chance to spring in the cross. He does so. All the way to the back post. And Sam McKenzie just nods it behind for a corner. In comes the corner. It's Williamson jumping. 
and it's over the crossbar. Andrew Gregg doing well on the far side, beating two men, and his cross plucked out of the air by Grant Pennant. David Booth through to Craig Morrison, the offside flag up on the far side, not to Morrison's liking. Here's Neil Davidson for Huntley. Good shot, good save down low from Joe Mallon. The chance still might be on for Davidson. In goes Adam Porritt and eventually sees the ball away to safety. Porritt flicking the ball on. Nice touch from Sutherland. Stephen Mackay's through and that's a good save from the foot of Grant Pennant. Mackay once more. Helps it on for Xander Sutherland. Out comes Pennant and beats him to the ball. Greg. Sends in a cross. Graham was a target. Out comes Pennant. Xander Sutherland. Meeting his man on the far side, rolling the ball back into Andrew Gregg. Great save, Grant Pennant. Well, perhaps on day one we've seen a contender for save of the season. And it's Huntley's turn to attack the Broder goal. David Booth stopped in his tracks by the appearance of the offside flag. Mackay to Graham. Out to Sutherland. And there's Sutherland assessing his options, sending the ball in. It'll fall for McLeod. Oh, it's off the crossbar. Oh, Grant Pennant finally beaten. But the woodwork to Huntley's rescue. There's Andrew Gregg driving forward, trying to find Sutherland. He collided with Dorrit and steps Russell Gould. And we'll see the ball away to safety. Brora starting to get a bit anxious now. They're still charging towards that Huntley goal. Here's Porritt. Sends in the cross. It's Mackay with the header. And turns it behind. Martin McLean. Graham, McLean, lovely through ball, Stephen Mackay's on to it, Mackay, it's Xander Sutherland, Andrew Gregg wants it, it's Andrew Gregg for number one, and Brora are off and running, it's taken him 28 minutes, it's been 28 minutes of severe pressure on the Huntley goal, but what a lovely, well worked, teamwork goal, Xander Sutherland rolling the ball into the path of Andrew Gregg, out came Grant Pennant. There was no stopping young Chubbs. For it. Oh, might have ended up in a bit of trouble here as the youngster goes down with an injury. On comes the Brora physio. It doesn't look good for Adam Porritt. Signed in the summer after his release from Ross County. David Booth for Huntley. As Grant Monroe steps in, Brora down to 10 men. And Monroe sees the ball out of safety on the far side. Doesn't look good for Porritt. And Brora make their first change of the afternoon. On comes Brora youngster James Ross. Martin McLean to Morrison. Morrison. Sends the ball forwards, and the Sutherland is there. Quick off his line was Grant Pennant, though. Sutherland maintains he took a knock going through there. And the goalkeeper just having a, a few words with Xander Sutherland. It's Mackay drilling the ball towards goal, and it's been a busy old Huntley debut for Grant Pennant. This time Sutherland just exchanging a few words with some Huntley directors on the far side. Good natured though, I hope. Sutherland. Nice through ball from Mackay to run onto. He's got Dorrit with him. And that's a good tackle from Craig Dorrit. 
Sutherland with the corner. Colin Williamson is jumping. And there's number two for Broder. It was simple enough. Colin Williamson allowed plenty of time and space in the penalty box to rise up. Up like a salmon to nod in number two. Sutherland, playing it off for Mackay. Now Graham, wanting to shoot in the left boot, drills the ball towards goal. Xander Sutherland is lurking in the six yard box and Grant Bennett makes a save. Still the danger on with Ross as Huntley get their lines cleared. Well, no let up at the start of the second half as the men in red determined to push on. Well, that's a nasty looking challenge and Andrew Gregg by Ian Cruikshank, the Huntley captain. And there's a real coming together now of players in blue and black and red and white. Yellow card for the Huntley skipper Cruikshank. Morrison with the free kick in towards the back post, punched away by Dorrit. It might fall for Stephen Mackay who pulls a trigger and it's knocked behind. Sutherland on the far side. In comes the cross. Morrison might get the chance to shoot. Or was a contact there? Billy Baxter says no. Monroe. Great ball out to the near side. Andrew Gregg takes it down well. Rosa into Mackay. And another save from Grant Pennant. Adam McNamee trying to win the ball back for Huntley. Morrison is a man that's doing well in the midfield for Broder. Here's Bruce Raffle, formerly of Keith. Out to the far side for Blair Johnston. Adam McNamee trying his luck. Ruffling the side netting of Joe Mallon's net. Oh, Monroe and Malin, just a, a breakdown in communication. Might give Huntley a glimpse of hope here as Johnston sees the ball in. It eventually falls for Bruce Raffle and it's behind for a corner. In comes the corner. Sam McKenzie's there. Williamson just tidies up. Sutherland. Taking on Thomas Johnston. And that was ambitious from Xander Sutherland. Monroe, using all of his experience. Greg, lovely ball out to the near side for Xander Sutherland. That's a well-placed ball from Greg. Sutherland with the cross, Mackay with the header, and that is excellent from Broda. A wonderful goal from the champions. Greg Sutherland and Mackay all involved in the process and Stephen Mackay on the score sheet with the neatest of flicks with the head into the corner and Broda on easy street. Graham back out to the corner kick taker Sutherland. Sutherland with the cross, it was a shot, it was well saved by Pennant and Huntley hack it away to safety. David Booth finding Bruce Raffle. That's a great ball. Adam McNamee's continued his run. McNamee with the cross. It's Johnston with the effort. Good save. Down low at his near post by Joe Mallon. In comes the corner. Punch clear by Mallon. Anders Sutherland holds up possession on the halfway line. Good ball into space for Stephen Mackay. Mackay with the cross, looking for Sutherland. Grant Pennant is there. Adam McNamee. Swings in the cross. Joe Mallon plucks it out of the air. Xander Sutherland with the corner. Falls all the way to the back post. Got Graham with the effort and it's flashed wide.
Morrison strokes it forward for Sutherland. Xander Sutherland might fancy his chances here. Drills the ball towards goal. Good save from Pennett. And eventually wins the free kick. Monroe heads the ball forward. James Mackay. Martin McLean. Through to Stephen Mackay. And that's simple for Stephen Mackay. His second of the afternoon. And it's Broder's fourth. Well, Grant Pennett has had a decent afternoon in goal for Huntley, but there was no way he was stopping Stephen Mackay through one-on-one, -on -one, simple as you like, and places the ball beyond the advances of the goalkeeper. James Ross for Brora sets Scott Graham on his way. Good stuff from the former clock man. Wins a foul and a free kick. Billy Baxter just having a, a quick word with Bruce Raffle and flashes him the second yellow card of the afternoon. In comes the free kick. Might go to the back post for Grant Munro. And he's headed over. He really should have placed that in at the back post and that would have made it number five. Sutherland. Rolling the ball back for Ross. Oh, that's a great goal from James Ross. Well, he had no right to score from that distance with the amount of players in the box, but he did. Number five, Julie arrives for Broda with 50 minutes left on the clock. And the Broda youngster, James Ross, rolling the ball into the back of the net. And roll. Morrison picks up. Morrison fancies his chances, and it's punched clear by Pennett. And I'm not too sure he knew too much about that one. McLean battling for possession. Williamson for Mackay. James Mackay. Looking for Stephen Mackay. He finds Mackay. It just trickles through for Pennett. Monroe, lovely touch with the outside of the boot. Mackay's filled. Gavin Morrison is all smiles. He might fancy his chances here. Up steps Gavin Morrison and drills the ball into the back of the net. Well, a fantastic free kick from Gavin Morrison. It might have taken a small deflection. But who cares about that one? We'll give him that. The Brora Rangers number six fires in Broder Rangers sixth of the afternoon Mackay Stephen Mackay finding James Mackay might be a chance here for the debut boy to get on the score sheet tries to find the cross and it's not behind James Mackay linking it well with his namesake Stephen Mackay with the cross. Easy for Grant Pennett. Martin McLean to Graham, who's been lively on his first league start for the club. In comes the cross, and Grant Pennett is equal to it. Billy Baxter brings an end to the game. The champions start the defence of the title in style. What a way to kick off the season. A 6-0 victory for Brewer Rangers. I think it means everything, but that, that's what went on last year. Today was the start of a new season, and it's good to see the championship flag, but the players were focused on one thing, that was trying to get three points. And obviously it was a great performance today. What did you take from the game? I think it was a workman performance. I think we played better at times, but the players know that. But to score six goals, and they could have had a little bit more. It says volumes for the players. And again, we put young players into the pitch. They don't look at the place. And talk us through some of the goals that you saw today, because some of them were real quality, especially Andrew Greggs to kick us off. Well, I think there was about 10 passes involved in that, and there was off from left-hand side to right-hand side, back to left-hand side. And I, I, I really don't see that sometimes in higher league level, you know. But it's one of these ones that, some of the goals in the second half, they're, they're playing the link-up and back heels. But you can only do that when you're 3 or 4-0 up. You won't do that at 1-0 or anything like that, so... 
it's one of the plays you just give the players a little bit of vision and just go and do it. Uh, no, definitely not the result. You know, they're a good team, a very good front four, very solid all over the park. Know their job, but we're disappointed with some of the goals we lost and the second half, how we lost our shape, especially after the third goal went in. Um, too much ball watching going on and pulling ourselves out of positions, you know, and pick, instead of picking up players. Um, first goal, there was a shout for a free kick, and we've got done an overload for a couple of boys that came back and helped out. Second goal, a, a free header at a corner. Craig Mose put his hand up, and so he got caught underneath it. And you can't give teams like Brora a 2 0 start, you know, especially coming up to half time. Um, I think just after half time, we started getting into the game with a, a chance, good block from Grant and Rowe. And uh, next minute, they got the part in the score by our slack defending and ball watching and leaving the player spare in the middle. I thought we played well. Um, I think we can play better, to be, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, it was a good, solid team performance. Um, perhaps a little bit nervy the first 20 minutes once we got the goal and got into our stride I thought we played well um, kicked a lot of chances um, which is good looked solid at the back so um, again just a performance that we've become accustomed to you know hard working good team good solid team performance it's always great to get a goal early uh, should have scored in the first half um, good save from the goal I think I'll put it down to that but um, bad miss from from my point of view but it was good to uh, open the account it was a great ball from Xander um, and, and look, I got a header and put it in the corner and then the second one was a great three ball from Martin and put it on a plate for me. So, yeah, delighted to get off the, get off the um, scoring charts and uh, get off the mark and um, good to get, all, get all three, three points and a home win. That was, that, was a, that was a great team performance, but I think individually there was some great performance as well. But to me, the most important thing there is, is the team and to still have three players to come back in, it, it, it bodes well. And young James Ross getting his first goal for the club as well today. Big for a local boy. Well, I think it meant he's done his knee, shin, ankle and his toe all at one time. But what a strike it was. He plays midweek and he plays again, comes on, comes on the game when Adam gets injured. Did fantastically well. And Adam Puray taking off in the first half too. That's going to be a bit of a loss if it doesn't work out. Well, it's a loss because he's not a young boy. It's, but the thing is, we don't know the extent of his injury until the spelling goes away. So it might take a couple of days. But nobody likes to see it, but it's one of these ones that happens in football. It's, football's a contact sport. You just need to brush yourself down, take, take the injury and get back. Russell's experienced. He can read the game. He's played there years ago. Um, he's been struggling with a groin injury for the last two weeks. Um, he's gave it a go today. It didn't last in the 90, but we need these experience in there to, to help speak. And I think it showed when he came off that we kind of lost our shape a bit. And then it was an influx of goals, and I think he came off at 2-0. It's a very young squad. Obviously, there's been an influx of players this summer. I think Tom's just turned 17, and um, Sam, I think, is maybe just 18. Um, so there is a lot of youth in the side as well. But we're still looking, we still need another couple of players. And we're looking out you know, for a, a couple of players throughout the, the team. This helps strengthen the squad. Any goal scoring bets with Connor Gethins again this season? Um, we'll, wait, we'll wait and see. Um, as I've always said to Connor, he's a, he's a striker. Um, I'm a former defender, so uh, I'd always expect him to beat me. Um, obviously, it's been documented a lot in the press in this past week about Brora potentially winning the league for a second time. <coughs> Today, maybe showed that you're on that course. But what do you make of all this hype and speculation that Brora are going to do? It's going to happen, and, and, and we don't focus on that. To be honest with you, we know what our aim is, and our goal is to retain the title. There's no question about that. And I've got so much belief and confidence in the players around me um, that we can go and do that. Um, I very much believe that we're a team to. to beat. I think everyone will raise their game when they come and play us, whether it's up here or, or, or away. Um, but we're strong enough to, to be able to deal with that and um, that's yeah, it's, it's plain and simple. Our aim is to, to win the league again, no question about that. In terms of where you were last season, today was really a continuation of where you finished. It was, but uh, it's one of these ones you don't expect to, to win 6 now. You have to work your socks off to do it. And it's not just the back forward and midfield, it's forward as well. That's, that's the way they get their joy. They work their socks off on the ball and off the ball. And it's the only way it's going to work. Perfect, thanks Davey. No problem. Well, let's have a look at results elsewhere on day one of the Highland League. Clack the Cudden 1, Cove Rangers 1, Connor Scully opening the scoring for Cove on 29 minutes. Clack found a level of low three minutes before the end. Daniel McLennan with the strike. Forest Mechanics also left it late. They drew 1-1 with Fraserburgh. Courtney Cooper opening the scoring 19 minutes before the end for Fraserburgh. Ross McPherson 
with the equaliser deep into second half stoppage time. Fort William 1, Bucky Thistle 2, Sean Grant got the fort off to the best possible start on 10 minutes. Jay Shane scored the equaliser for Bucky two minutes after half time and they won it through Craig McMillan with a penalty six minutes from time. Lossiemouth 1, Keith 3, Stuart Massey opened the scoring for Keith on 30 minutes with Michael Ewan adding his second a minute before half time. Kevin Jigged got Lossiemouth back in the game on 66 before Michael Ewan added a second for himself and a third for Keith on full time. Nairn County nil for Martin United 1, Cami Keith with a goal two minutes from the end to make sure for Martin get off to the best possible start. Rothis nil, Inverurie 7 in the highest scoring game of the day. It was all about Martin Bavage who struck a hat-trick in the first hour of the match. He scored on the first minute, the 57th and 61st, a penalty on the 57th. Then doubles for Neil Gold on 64 and 67 and Dean Donaldson on 72 and 78. Strathsby Thistle nil, Tariff United 4. Nick Gray opened the scoring. Ten minutes later, Jamie Bigri added his second. Darren Mackey, the former Aberdeen man, on 70 minutes. And a fourth was added five minutes from time through Kushnikovs. Wick Academy 3, Devrim Vale 2. Quite a game, this one. Gary Weir opened the scoring on 43 minutes. An equaliser was found by the visitors through John Urquhart just after the restart, but Gary Weir made it 2-1 to Wick on 56. Kyle Ray equalised for Devrim Vale seven minutes before the end, and the Vale must have thought they'd earned a point, but Wick Academy won it in stoppage time in the second half through Richard McCaddy. Well, let's have a look at how the league table looks after day one. Wins for Inverurie, Brora, Tariff, Keith, Wick, Buckey, and for Martin, Clack and the Cudden, Cove Rangers earned a point after a one-all draw at Clack Park. So too did Forrest and Fraserburgh there in mid-table. While Devrim Vale, Fort William, Nairn County, Lossiemouth, Strathsby, Thistle, Huntley and Rothis are all yet to get off the mark. But there's midweek fixtures coming up and a perfect chance to do so. Mm -hmm.